So I have given birth and been pregnant five times, all without an epidural. So I feel like I'm well versed in telling you what childbirth actually feels like. Hi, and welcome to my channel, Shades of Sage, where I share all things motherhood. My name is Tashima. I'm a doula, chef, and mama five. And today I'm gonna tell you what childbirth feels like. So inquiring minds want to know, right? Like if you're a first time mom, or if you're a first time, you know, VBAC seeking mom, if you've had a C-section previously, and now you are attempting a vaginal birth at the cesarean, you want to know what does labor feel like what does <laughs> contractions feel like what does pushing out a baby feel like right okay so I'm gonna tell you and it feels like hmm well let's break it up right let's break it up into contractions versus the pushing because to me they're very very different right but of course it's all the same process in order to get your baby earth side so for me, labor or contractions feel like a tightening. It feels like a really strong tightening in the bottom of my stomach or the bottom of my uterus, right? That's what it feels like for me. In early labor, it's only, for me, it's, I don't know. I don't know if I have a high pain tolerance. You can, like I said, check out my other videos I have on this channel. I have all of my birth stories. Please excuse that background noise. But I have all of my, you know, epidural free videos that you can watch to see how I was able to do it without an epidural. But in the beginning, it's not that bad. It just feels like tightening that starts at the bottom of my uterus and it works its way up. And then my whole belly becomes firm. Now, I am one of those women, thank God, <laughs> that has not experienced um, back labor because I have heard that that is like the worst form of labor. All of my contractions, all of my pain mostly was up front. So in the front of my belly, pretty much only my belly and obviously the vaginal area, you know, especially as baby gets lower and lower and lower, you will feel increased pressure there. Lots and lots and lots of increased pressure there as baby is making their way out. But I never really felt like contractions that tightened all the way around to my back. And I never really had like back, I would say like back labor pains. I of course did experience still just regular like you know lower back pain throughout the course of my pregnancy and you know as i got closer to my due date just having pain in that area just from carrying a baby around you know forward forward loading for so many months at a time you know things get out of alignment your joints and everything like that to prepare for your baby to come out vaginally and if i haven't said already this is for the sake of a vaginal birth right it's going to be different if you're having a c-section or if you're having a planned cesarean you may go through some of the labor process or you may not labor at all so for the intent of this video childbirth as in a vaginal birth right but obviously a c-section is still giving birth as well so that's what it felt like for me and I wish I could say or I wish I could give you something to compare it to but <laughs> and I know this upsets some of my sisters but for me fortunately I do not have like cramps throughout my cycle so like my monthly cycle and period and stuff like that I do not experience cramps so I can't compare it to cramps for you <laughs> I know that kind of sucks I'm just trying to give you like a reference of the pain you know and what it actually feels like so I can't say for me personally if it feels like period cramps because I don't get those <laughs> all right so I'm sorry about that but if you're a lady out there okay comment below if you're a lady who has had like really bad cramps throughout your menstrual cycle or you experience really painful periods and then you have given birth after the fact maybe comment down below and compare the two was it the same kind of feeling for you in experience or did one you know hurt more than the other or was the cramping uh, cessation different for you or hurt more than the other I'm I I would love to know this as well because again i don't really get menstrual cramps for my cycle but yeah that's what contractions feel like to me in the beginning of labor so i want to say like before i'm like six centimeters they're really tolerable like i'm able to talk through them i'm able to breathe through them i'm able to you know walk through them and squat through them and all of those things it doesn't really get hard hard for me until i'm going through transition and then once i'm in transition that is the hardest part in my opinion of labor and for most women you know who have given birth before that's the hardest part because your body's doing the most amount of work in that time transition is from seven centimeters to nine or you know fully dilated so it's doing the last bit of work your cervix is doing the last bit of work of getting out the way and becoming fully dilated to you know 10 centimeters and that is usually the part of labor where most women are vocal they may be saying things like i can't 
can't do this i can't take this this is too hard can somebody else do it for me i have literally said <laughs> all of those things for all of my labors or i'm never doing this again that is usually when you hear women say that is when you're going through transition those are the harder ones for me so at that time i am not as vocal i'm not able to talk you know as coherently or as freely as like early labor and yeah i do have to do a lot more like mindfulness i have to do a lot more like breathing and coping mechanisms a lot more of like changing my positions to whatever feels right in a moment so that it can help me with the pain definitely like hip squeezes and things like that but again for as far as like the pain that i'm feeling is still mostly all belly for me and i can feel my baby's head descending so if you do give birth without an epidural or if you have given birth without an epidural before you will notice you will feel your baby's head descending and for some women it's just like a feeling of increased pressure and so you can tell that you are becoming more dilated which is great of course in the beginning of labor you may not feel the increased pressure and if you know if you've had more children or if you've had a lot of children already then you may start to feel like that increased pressure throughout the course of your pregnancy so like the later stages of your pregnancy oh my gosh from my last pregnancy i started feeling this like i want to say like 32 weeks 34 weeks it was really early for me and so so yeah <laughs> but it does increase even more so throughout the course of labor so for me tightening increased pressure increased vaginal pressure of your baby coming out of course in early labor or you know in the beginning stages of labor your contractions are you know anywhere from like three to five to eight minutes apart and towards the end they are closer together they last longer and then once you're ready to start pushing they will become sometimes most times like back to back to back to where you're not getting a break so definitely take that time throughout your early labor to do to do whatever it is you want to do and you know conserve your energy also like you know don't try to like speed up labor too much so to speak like enjoy it because if it's real labor it's not going to stop anyway you know until your baby is delivered or it's not going to like slow down that that much it's going to continue until your baby is born but yeah conserve your energy because you're going to need all that energy at the end all right so that's what contractions feel like to me that's what labor feels like to me it is a gradual tightening and you know what's really funny is that i can kind of feel or kind of like feel in my body when a contraction is about to start before it starts and so that's really crazy because I really was like mindful of that for my last pregnancy again all of my stories are on here but I did deliver or I did do all of my um, laboring at home so you know I wasn't restricted by anything I was able to move however I wanted walk do all the things right and I could tell when one was about to come before I had it it's just like this I don't really know how to describe that part it's really like this mmm tingling or i don't know i don't know like if i could compare it to anything it's like a spidey sense <laughs> or maybe that's just because you know my sons are into spider-man but it's like the sense that i'm about to have a contraction without the pain right like i know it's about to come on and then i start to feel it i start to feel it from the bottom and it grips like really really tightly and then it moves up that's what it feels like to me so it's kind of like a like a, all right just imagine this is the bottom right and it's like tight 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 it moves all the way up and then it just it just stays there for a while now again at the end of your labor your contractions will last <laughs> for a while they may be anywhere from like a minute to a minute and a half so for me i like to compare contractions to waves like you know you ever been to the beach and you see the waves like come in slowly 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 they get a little bit bigger and then they crash and then they go back out to the sea that is what a contraction feels like for me and that is what i usually visualize in my head so you know as this getting tighter and as the pain you know increases or the gripping sensation increases that's what i see in my head as like the waves rolling in and they're coming all the way up and then it stays there for a little while and then it goes back out to shore and then you have like that breath or that that break in between contractions to regroup regather yourself drink some water breathe or whatever and get prepared for the next contraction all right so let's talk about the pushing stage of labor which again to me is different because for the contractions right for the contractions there's really not that much you can do like you don't really want to fight your contractions but i feel like what worked the best for me is just like embracing them allowing them to take their their course so you know like not tensing up or anything like that knowing that they're gonna come and knowing that you know it's bringing me one step closer to my baby like every contraction is bringing me closer to meeting my baby but there's not that much you can do besides just trying to find comfort throughout the pain or the intensity of your contraction but pushing time for me 
that's go time. I love to push the stage of labor because it's like you can do something now with the, the pain of the contractions. And me personally, when I'm pushing, I don't feel the pain of the contractions. It is a welcome relief or like a welcome break from the intensity or the pain of the contractions. If you've seen some of my other videos or shorts, I talk about the fetal ejection of reflex. I have had that for all of my births and pregnancies and so that really does help for the pushing stage of labor also as well. So I remember for my first VBAC birth, like when it got to the pushing stage, that's when I started to like kind of freak out in my mind because I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to push now <laughs> without an epidural. But honestly, that was the easiest part. In my experience, that was the easiest part because again, I was able to do something with the pain and with the intensity of the contractions. Whereas before, you know, you're able to push or before you're fully dilated, you kind of just have to let the contractions happen to you. But push and stage to me was the easiest part of labor because I could push with the contractions. So I could feel all the contractions. I could feel it, you know, gearing up and getting really, really strong and intense. And I was able to use all of that energy that I would have had to just sit and take before, you know, while I'm waiting to dilate or whatever. I can use all that energy now to push my baby out and bear down. And that is what I did for, you know, all of my three vaginal births that I did have. And it was, it was great. It helped me out so, so much. I did not feel per se, like the intensity of the contractions throughout the pushing stage of labor. My first pushing session or my first you know, time pushing, that took longer for me just because the sensation was new. So I didn't really know, you know how to push and all of that. But for my last two, they came out really fast, 11 minutes and 15 minutes, you know, respectively. And again, it's because I had the fetal ejection reflex that was working with me. Now for me, I kind of got mine a little bit earlier than I was fully dilated. So that became kind of an issue for my first birth because I was pushing with some of those, you know, contractions or when my body was feeling like it needed to push, but I was not fully dilated. And so that caused, you know, other complications. But the last time when I actually got the urge to push or when it was like this overwhelming, it's an overwhelming sense to push. Like your body will start pushing for you. <laughs> like no doubt about it, it will start pushing for you and you don't really have to do anything. So if you're one of those women who doesn't want to bear down and push your baby out, know that your baby will still be delivered anyway. There's a point in your pelvis and it's different for every single woman where your body and your baby will start to push the baby out on its own. And so you really don't have to bear down and push and all of those things. I'm going to do another video about coach pushing and pushing intuitively because that's what I did. And I think it's the best way to go because mom is able to tell when she needs to push if she wants to push and how long how much force and all of those things so that is what i did for my last two births and it worked out great the pushing stage was like 10 to 15 minutes if i had to say the first one i pushed three times and my last i pushed five times and two of those were like practice pushes for me anyway so maybe like three to five contractions in all now again you know pushing stage will range from woman to woman right and as soon as well once your your mind and once your body knows what sensation to go for when you're pushing you're pretty much golden and unless your baby you know gets stuck or has like the social or anything like that you really shouldn't have too much of a problem pushing your baby out especially again if you can feel if you can feel then you know what you need to do what position you need to get into to help aid your baby to get out and everything like that but again the pushing stage for me was the easiest part of labor because i could do something productive with those painful contractions that i was experiencing oh so one thing I forgot to mention, and how did I forget this? I forgot to mention the burning sensation when your baby is crowning. Oh my gosh, to me, that is the most intense part of pushing a baby out, especially without an epidural, because you're going to feel all of this, right? But it's when your baby's head, when your baby's head is at the vaginal opening and stays there. Now, again, if you've seen some of my other videos, especially my vaginal tearing um, video, this is the point where you do not want to push because pushing during this part can cause you to tear. And that's what happened for me every single time. But again, I had to feel ejection reflex working against me. There was a point in labor where I could not not push. Like it just was not going to happen. Whether I was going to push with the contraction or not, my body was going to push. And so I just <laughs> wanted to get my babies out as fast as possible and so i just bared down with everything that was in me and pushed okay but anyway that is that is what the crown knitting part of labor feels like and most people will call it the ring of fire so if you've ever heard that term used that's what they're talking about it's when your baby is making this emergence out and where it, it burns it does burn it's like a burning sensation you will feel that but if you can kind of pant through those contractions and allow baby's head allow your vagina right to stretch to that part or allow your cervix to stretch to that part no allow your vagina to stretch to that part 
then once it has become accustomed to that part you should be able to push your baby out freely without tearing or minimal tearing on your perineum and on your vagina okay so just remember that keep that in mind when you're pushing that that part is really intense again if you're doing this without an epidural you'll feel it if you have an epidural you might not feel it but it is i feel like the most intense or the most pressure part of the pushing stage of labor once baby's head is out you have a little bit of break you have a little bit of relief and then you got to push the shoulders out but that's really the most, the most labor intensive part of pushing once those two parts are out the rest of the baby pretty much slips out and you are golden you're good to go and then you get to hold your baby in your arms for the first time so that's really exciting as well i forgot to mention that and i wanted to mention that because that is super important for the pushing stage or what childbirth feels like because you're going to experience that you know if you give birth vaginally and then afterwards after you give birth you'll still feel a little bit of contractions but not all of that pressure right because now your baby is out and safely delivered and thank god right but you'll still have a little bit of contractions because your uterus now has to clamp down and clothes and you still have to deliver your placenta so your placenta will come out in one to two pushes and hospitals do it differently versus a home birth you know so, so you know it may take some time or they may you know speed up the process by giving you uh, some extra pitocin to you know speed up the delivery of your placenta but once that is out your cramping is is not as bad now some women do experience you know after uh, pains or after contractions once your baby is born i did not experience those for my first four but for my last i did and if you want a story time on that let me know <laughs> because it was new for me it was definitely a new ball game but you'll still experience some contractions or some you know tightening and cramping as your uterus shrinks back down to size and then again if you're breastfeeding you will experience that also as well because breastfeeding is going to rev up that process for you and help with your uterus shrinking back down but on the other side of it it does increase you know those those postpartum contractions or cramps okay so i think that is everything <laughs> for this video that is what labor and delivery feels like for me that is what contractions feel like for me and that is what the pushing stage feels like for me now again every woman is different every experience can be different so like i said i've given birth five times and each and every one of them was a different experience right um and taught me you know just so many things that i'm able to share here on this channel but yeah that's what it feels like so if you're a first time mom you know and you've never delivered a baby before please don't be afraid of the intensity of contractions i promise you it does not last forever it's definitely something that you can do many women have done it i have done it and you know it can be it can be a beautiful experience like honestly i love childbirth if you cannot tell <laughs> Like, I probably would have maybe two more, but you gotta know your limits. And I feel like five, five is, you know, that's enough for now, for okay. me. So that's what it feels like. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you wanna share some of your childbirth stories down below, what contractions feel like for you, what cramps feel like for you. Maybe if it's, you know, a comparison so that other women are able to better, you know, grasp it or just be able to be better prepared for their labor and deliveries as well. If you're not subscribed to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, okay? And comment, share, like, all of those things. And if you watched the whole entire video for me today, thank you so much. Give me a, give me a black heart emoji. A black heart emoji to match with my outfits. And thank you so, so much. I think that's all. I'm gonna go. Remember to let your story be your power and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.